Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Dominic Chu. We're joined today by Zachary Carabell, InvestNet's head of global strategy. And Zachary, as we take a look at what's happening with the headlines and trading around it, you've got President Trump's top economic advisor stepping down. You've also got talk of trade and tariffs and everything else. What does represent, in your mind, the biggest risk for investors in today's market? I think the noise and the fear around all the things you just said and the relentless, endless speculation of what it's all going to mean in a way that, at least for the time being, has been largely detached from how any of these companies are performing, right? I mean, I am just as susceptible to the noise and the buzz and the concern and the speculation about is there a trade war? Is there a chaos in the White House? Are we going to survive a trade imbroglio? Who knows? But for the time being, almost none of this has manifested itself in how many iPhones Apple sells or, you know, does GE get out of its own morass or not? Or, you know, go down the list of hundreds or thousands of different stories. Um, there's a big gap between those fundamentals right now and that noise. So l let's talk about the hypotheticals because it sounds like we're playing investors are anyway, a game of what if, right? What if this happens with trade? What if this happens with tariffs? What if this happens with the new economic advisor for President Trump? So right. what are the corporate fundamentals? What are the fundamentals on a bigger picture macro basis that are underpinning the bull case for the markets right now? You know, the IMF come, comes out a few weeks ago with their 2018 assessment. And, I'm, you know, the IMF is just as able to be wrong as any other institution. But they point to a global synchronous economic expansion, which is part of what's been driving interest rates a little bit higher, right? The sense that we're in this period of, of, of economic growth that's true in most parts of the world and that there's going to be somewhat of an ending to the really, really easy money that characterized almost everywhere from 2009 to now. So there's that aspect. But, the, you know, the fact is it's very hard to point economically to anywhere in the world that means anything and see anything but a decent picture. There's political chaos everywhere you turn, from Italy to Germany to Britain to the United States to the Korean Peninsula. You know, you name it, there's political tumult. But for the moment, at least... There seems to be economic placidity, and companies are benefiting from this. I mean, this is a period of very strong earnings, low levels of corporate debt, and so on. So, Zachary, let's just play devil's advocate, just, just humorous, if you will. I will we, do that. We, we have a lot of hypotheticals. You laid out a number of them just right now. But as you take a look at the, the, the hypothetical scenarios that could play out, I mean, the financial markets are always in the, in, in the mode of handicapping or putting odds on things. Right. Is there something out there that you would look for that really could be a game changer, that could be that black swan, that thing that nobody's looking for that could take down this market? Does such a thing exist in the current environment? I mean, if you do the caveat that no one's looking for, I have no idea. I mean, I think there are some things that lots of people are looking for that I would agree represent uh, massive threats to everything, including the potential of war on the Korean Peninsula, which, you know, it's hard to see how that ends in anything other than a complete game changer for politics, economics, you name it. You know, to the point where we're not having this mild-mannered conversation about valuations and trade. Um, I also think there is a risk, which I've been looking at, as have a lot of people, of just the sheer algorithmic ETF electronic trading as a governing force in the markets that I think all of us are aware of, but the implications of which remain pretty opaque and uncertain. And I don't know whether those circuit breakers are going to hold. You know, that being said, I'm not sure how you protect against that, right? And, and that's true of the Korean thing, too. I think if you're going to be in the markets, you have to accept there are certain chronic levels of risk. I don't know what the percentages are, but they are there. And the attempt to inoculate yourself against those is like not getting in a car because you know there's a possibility there's going to be an accident. So, Zachary, before we let you go here, what are you telling clients? How are you positioning right now? Is it generally more defensive, a little bit more aggressive? Is it more short stocks, bonds, emerging markets? How do you feel the opportunity shape up right now? Right. So I'm going to give you a somewhat unsatisfying answer and that I think the way clients should be positioned has a lot to do with what they need and what they're comfortable with. So there's a risk tolerance that's very personal, and I think that always has to be respected. Uh, the second thing is the noise, right? These kind of conversations that happen, and certainly with the era of Trump, they seem to happen daily, where there is always a, an emerging crisis. There's always a, oh my God, what does this mean? And we all live in that world, so people do tend to react to that and play the what-if game and get worried because everyone else seems worried. I think that 
fear and anxiety as a pallor over your ability to make decisions and potentially a governing force in your decisions is probably going to lead people to the wrong decisions. And so counseling everyone to, you know, does this matter? Is this actually going to impact what you're doing or is it just the noise du jour? All right. So it sounds like taking some of the emotion out of the equation might be the way for some investors to go. Thank yes. you very much, Zachary Thanks, Carabell. Tom. My thanks again to Zachary Carabell of InvestNet for joining us today here on Trading Nation. And thank you for watching Trading Nation. I'm Dominic Chu. We'll see you next time around. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.